What's up guys? Whoa, that lens is super dirty. Let's get back to our pro series on what it takes to get into the professional production industry. So we've covered audio, we've covered mics, we've covered desks, um, and we still need to do like some more behind the scenes stuff that the uh, costs associated with that. Uh, but today, um, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about lights. I know you guys like lights, so we're gonna go out to the shop. Old Trey Turn is here today. Let's get started. Before we get started, I just wanna say one thing. You guys that wanna get into the business, I understand it's a cool, I mean, it's it seems really cool. I get that, and the one thing that you gotta realize is it's super expensive, and unless you've been in the game 10, 15, 20, 30 years, it's tough to get your foot in the door. Don't just go out, buy all this stuff, and expect it to work for you. You've got to work for it as well. So um, if you're getting into this, if you're a DJ, a lot of guys watch my channel, they're DJs. If you're a DJ and you say, hey, I want to get into doing production, and as soon as I buy all this gear, all these gigs are going to magically come to me, you are absolutely incorrect. It takes years and years of building clientele and working and word of mouth. And just like the other day, I was talking to a client and I, you know, just touching base with another wedding planner. I said, hey, um, what's it gonna take for my DJs to work with you more often? Cause we worked with her a little bit last year. And uh, she said, well, um, you know, it's easier to go with company B because they have DJs and lighting and um, you know stuff like dancing on a cloud. Uh, I know you're not a full production company, but um, it's just easier sometimes. And this is a client that I I consider her a good friend. It's like how in the world does someone I consider a friend not know about all of this? And it's just because people don't know if you're not putting yourself out there and you're not advertising and people aren't spreading around word of mouth they just don't know so um, don't buy the gear and think that uh, it's just gonna come you got to spend time forging relationships side rant over so uh, this is it's already set up this is this is stuff I'm kind of working on some new looks for uh, spring festival season and whether it be festivals or concerts or whatever just trying to work on you know my lighting skills unless you practice just like DJing or anything else mixing you're not gonna get any better so I've got some stuff set up here the stuff that you see that's on the truss because it's still kind of slow season we're just setting stuff at the shop teaching um, new techs how to run lights whether it be on show express or whether it be on onyx by obsidian controls set it up practice play tear it down that's the only reason why it's up but we'll just walk through what's on the truss and the quantities and i'll put a grand total at the end of how much all this stuff costs um and then we'll just go from there so starting off with uh the fixture that's on the end which is actually this guy here this is a Rasha Professional uh, Cryo 7R, um, similar to a Sharpie beam. Uh, everybody really just calls them Sharpies. Um, Clay Packy makes the Sharpie, but the beams style Sharpie, uh, even I say it, uh, that's what this is. I have eight of them. Um, you see them, use, I use these quite frequently, so you guys have seen them before. I have eight of those guys right next to it. Chave, uh, Chave Professional, not Chave DJ, um, Chave Professional Legend 412. It is a RGB W wash fixture. Uh, it can do some quadrant stuff in there, provide some really cool eye candy type effects. Fast, practical fixture. It is a little older. They now have a, a Legend 412 Zoom, which is pretty dope, um, but these are what I have. I also have eight of these back here on these beams that I have double cheese burrowed on there these are a, an, an IP rated IP 65 rated LED zoom par and it's RGB a W um, the good thing about these is they are IP rated so instead of using a conventional front wash for the uh, downstage truss washing the stage um, sometimes in like festivals doing stuff outside you're worried about stuff getting wet and power so traditional 
Source 4 PARs or PAR 64s, whatever it is, they draw a lot of power and you need dimmers for them. So it's really expensive to get into and they're very power hungry, especially if you're not on like a three phase power situation where you kind of have all the power that you need, essentially. Uh, these are great for that and they're zoomable. So I can put 12 on, let's say, an Apex 3224 or a uh, Stageline SL260 stage and, uh, and wash the complete front deck, uh, throw up a basic, you know, what I think would be a basic wash uh, with them tilted and, and panned where I need them. And then I can zoom them in and out to create uh, hot spots or uh, performance areas for the talent. And that's it for the truss. So this is the box for the Legend 412 movers. These are, there are four more of the 7R beams. Behind this case here is a Chave Legend 550 spots. Um, again, this is a legacy fixture. It's still a great fixture though. The only problem is they are big and heavy um but you know five years ago this was a like a industry somewhat standard fixture this fixture here is a 575 watt uh discharge lamp still uh super practical i like to use these as moving washes so let's say we don't want to use the LED pars for a downstage wash. We don't want to use Leco's. We can use four of these guys and blow out the entire stage. They've got good color filters in there. They're just great fixtures. Um, I don't use them that much anymore just because they do weigh a ton. Um, but let's say all of our lights are being used. I will still throw these out as a ground package. Underneath it is a case of 12 of the uh, RGB AW UV PARs or up lights. I use these, uh, these lights here, up lights, PARs, have made more money than any other piece of equipment in the shop without question. Just about every weekend, we either have an uplighting job or a rental. One of the two, these things go out all the freaking time. They're made by a company called Rasha Professional. Do me a favor, go to rashaprofessional.com, and we'll have that on the screen here. Ask for my friend Joe. Tell him John with Crown Entertainment sent you. He might even hook you up with the old friends and family discount. We have 48 of these 36, uh, 36 of them are battery powered, so you plug them in, uh, battery lasts 7 to 8 hours typically, and then the other 12 are plug in to the wall, so we use those, they're a little bit uh, slimmer, so we can put them in truss for uh, warming a truss up, or anywhere that doesn't require like a, a battery powered fixture, we will use those, but generally 9 times out of 10 we'll take out the battery powered ones just because they're easy and simple to use. If a client comes here and picks up a rental for the up lights, we set the colors before they get here, say hey, uh, turn around, flip you know the power button. And, uh, and you're ready to rock and roll, turn them on 30 minutes before you start, and they will still be going by the time your guests leave. So uh, here's two cases of them. We've got another case right here, and then we've got uh, another case out on rental. So that's that. We're talking about lights, but we might as well talk about special effects. These are the uh, Art Fox Cold Spark units. They are super dope. You guys have seen them before. Trey will insert uh, some B-roll of these in action. Um, they're they're very cool. Uh, super, you know, it's no heat associated. You can put your hand over it. They do create somewhat of a dust, and you can see it on top right there. Uh, but that, you know, dust is better than heat. These are DMXable. Power con in and out. I've ran as many as uh, six of these off of one circuit. They don't take a whole bunch of power. Essentially, it's a turbine in there that's spinning up and uh, and making that powder flame up, essentially. But that's that. I currently own four of these. Uh, I have no reason to buy any more. I sell them in packages of two. And then you've got the cost associated with the, uh, with the powder as well. So that is that. LED battens, those are the clamps for them. They are RGB uh, AW and these don't have uh, UV. Uh, this is also by the company Rasha Professional. Again, 
uh, hit them up, tell them John sent you from Crown Entertainment. All metal body. All metal, super durable, very pro level for an affordable price. Uh, simple on off switch power con in and out so you can link them. Um, simple four button menu display, three and five pin DMX. And you know, they do have mounting brackets to where you can either hang them like this or hang them vertical. Uh, and I've even went through and like created designs with them like uh, zigzag or uh, chevron patterns. Um, super, super duper cool. I have uh, 10, 10 of these. Stuff like this, uh, globe uh, lights that we got in and we need to do some work on the bulbs. Got some stuff missing there. These don't go out a, an awful lot anymore. It was a huge hit probably two, two to three years ago, but now a lot of venues already have them installed. So any place that doesn't have them installed, we're going into like a gym or something for like a corporate gala and they want bistro lights overhead. We will use these. They are labor intensive. You gotta have uh, pipe and drape and poles. Um, we sell this generally a uh, dollar a foot, just to give you some guidelines to go off of. And I still think that's too cheap. That's just that's just me. We've got stuff like dimmer packs. In case we're not running our DMX, you know, Saco dimmer dimmer packs. We've got five or six of these laying around. They work good for par 56s. Just throwing something on a, a T bar. Let's say you have a small little outdoor event outside. They don't need a, a fantastic light show. They just want some front light to see the talent, such as a, a things like coffee shop uh, jams and stuff like that throw lights on a t-bar and uh and and dim them up and down maybe put some gel on there to create some contrast we we use stuff like this all the time hazers i do have two of the blizzard uh atmosphere hazers i'm not the biggest fan of them um, they work uh okay for what they are but they're a little small um to do some of the bigger uh, or I wouldn't even say arenas because I'm not doing arenas, but to do some of the bigger theaters and stuff like that, um, these just don't cut it, and I just don't think they give out the most even, um, even wash. Now, for a prom or high school function event, whatever, it'd be fine, but I don't like using it. Chave three phase dimmer, it needs some work. Uh, I also I need one if anybody out there has a Chave. TFX D12 dimmer that they want to sell me. Hit me up, djwoopig at gmail.com. I'll take it off your hands. Uh, 12 channels of dimming, three phase power. Let's just say it is what it is. Ooh, a couple weeks ago we did a video on the Pro X Simple Spot Pack. Congratulations to the winner and thank you to AGI Pro DJ for sending that stuff out. If you need something, DJ related or not, Hit up my friends over at AGI Pro DJ. They will take care of you. Also, as for the DJ Woo Pig discount, uh, in the description we'll have all the deets. But I did a, uh, a review on the Pro X Simple Spot. This is the Chave Easy Pen. Very, very similar. These things, uh, they're, they're great for highlighting and forecasting things in a specific spot of the room that does not have uh, the greatest light. Now, for lighting, let's say overhead tables, this isn't something I would recommend. A friend of mine, uh, DJ Hill, he uses the fuel pin spots. I saw him use them uh, on his uh, Instagram story this past weekend. They are fire. So I think I'm going to invest in some of those. They're a little pricey, but for overhead pin spotting, man, they look fantastic. DMX splitter. Oh. If you're just using Y cables, if you're just using Y cables to split your DMX, stop it. You're gonna run into a problem uh, sooner than later. I use the uh, just the regular old Chave DJ data stream. You've got uh, an in, a through, and four outs. And if I need to uh, to go somewhere else, because let's be honest, the shows that I'm doing, they don't have uh, a whole bunch of truss type of crazy sh stuff. Usually it's an upstage truss, a downstage truss, and totems and ground packages and stuff like that. So I can uh, daisy chain these two together and send uh, the DMX wherever I need to. So data splitter or you, you need one you just you need an optical splitter if you're running a lot of uh of dmx to several different places if you're doing lighting you're gonna need stuff like lifts crank stands truss global truss 
3,800 uh, crank stand. They go up 10 feet, hold 200 pounds a piece. Um, they're for sale if somebody wants to buy them. Um, I'll sell them to you for a, for a really good deal. We've got Genie Super Lifts. Before the pro guys chime in, I know they're not made specifically to, to hold stuff. I know. So keep the comments to yourself, okay? Uh, we've got the Genie Super Lifts. We've got the correct tower lifts. Um, we use these to lift PA where places we can't uh, fly. If we can't fly uh, our truss or PA or whatever, um, you would use um, lifts. My monograms, some people use uh, LED fixtures like the American DJ Icon, which I also used to have, uh, or projectors, which I think I'm going to get into, but I, on the other hand, use uh, Leco's ellipsoidals. Um, to be specific, I use ETC Source 4s. They're big, they're heavy, but man, do they put out a lot of light. Uh, 575 watt discharge lamp. Um, they create a lot of heat. They're not the safest thing, but uh, a, a lot of the venues here in Arkansas are barn or really open uh, venues. So using an LED monogram projector just doesn't, it doesn't cut through the sunlight like something like this does. Behind here with the Source 4s, we use these uh, scheduled 20 pipe to put it on a base and that's what they hang on to. It's not the prettiest thing, but they're black. So they kind of disappear in the, uh, in the background. While we're on the subject of pipe, might as well talk about <laughs> might as well talk about truss. So I currently have a, a fleet of 100% global truss. There's nothing wrong with global truss. It's where I started, and it's a good starting spot. But it's light duty utility truss. I will be this year upgrading to a medium duty or a heavier duty um, trussing system that can support more weight and is a lot more safe when hanging um, things that weigh a ton of weight such as line array cabinets and all your lighting and you know things that it gets heavy really fast and global truss just it's not strong enough to support some of the stuff that I'm looking to get into. So we're going to be making a move to either XSF uh, Tomcat Truss, Generico Truss, one of those three. Those are the big three players in the game, I would say. There's others. Don't, I mean, don't ring me on that. Um, but that's where we're going to be moving towards in the future. Just because Global's cool, um, but Global is more for DJ stuff or, you know, related applications. To get into the real productions, you need bolt together, not spigot. There's nothing wrong with spigot. See, now I'm going to get flamed in the comment section. Please, I'm just trying, I'm just trying to help, okay? Um, keep your comments nice, okay? But I would much rather buy something that I can cross rent to another company here in the state. And most of the companies here in the state have bolt together uh, standard Tomcat XSF truss. Down here we have uh, Sockervex bars. All these are loaded with uh, Source 4 750 watts. That's why you need something like a three phase dimmer. Um, when you're dealing with this much light, but make no mistake this here can put off a ton of light and it doesn't take up much truck room. I'm still waiting on my meat rack to get these up off of the floor and out of the way. And then we've got one that's just, it's got some par 56s on it. We've got two Ultratech Radiance Hazers um, in some shape, form or fashion. These guys uh, until you get to a certain level are kind of the industry standard when it comes to hazers. Having two of them helps an extreme amount, especially when you're dealing with things like lasers. Lasers require a ton of atmosphere. These hazers can put out uh, what you need and they even work well outdoors. It doesn't take a lot to keep it in a contained area uh, such as a stage with wind walls and stuff like that. When dealing with lighting, one thing that a lot of people don't take into account is things like clamps. Clamps are expensive. Whether you go with something like a trigger clamp um, or just a standard cheese burrow, there's another trigger clamp. Um, here's a, just a regular old standard clamp. Um, you're going to spend money in clamps and safeties. 
um, it's it's expensive, uh, but these are things you can't you, you can't go with like an American DJ plastic O clamp. If you're hanging uh, a three or four thousand dollar fixture on there, I would much rather have a rated TUV certified clamp. Uh, it just makes makes a lot more sense. And in this box here, it doesn't look like a lot, but that is all uh, three and five pin DMX cable. If it's DMX, it's labeled with a blue. That way, your three-pin XLR doesn't end up with the uh, microphone XLR cable. It ends up with the DMX cable. DMX cable and mic cable are not the same thing. If you think they are, you're going to find out one day that they're not. There's probably a thousand dollars at least worth of DMX cable in there. That's it for. That's basically it for lighting. So I'm going to send Trey over the prices and he's going to put that number what I have invested right here. Now again that may be a lot of money but I'm not even going to consider myself a professional lighting house. Um, some of the some of the lights I have in here I could are rider friendly and I could throw out there and say hey we've got some Chave Pro fixtures we've got some Alation fixtures um, some of it would work but things like the Sharpies uh, you know and some of the like the Battens and things of that nature you know some people are pretty particular so they want the industry standard name brand fixture I don't have a problem with that though because Let's just be honest, the shows that I'm doing, they're not bringing in their own LD, so nine times out of 10, it's me running the fixtures. For show control, I use, for the smaller shows, we use Chave. I didn't even know that computer was on. We use Chave Show Express 512. This is a single universe. I've got buddies who have these. If I ever need more, I can tack on and run uh, more than one universe at a time. But usually if I require something that needs more universes or a bigger show, I'm not gonna run this. I'm gonna run Onyx by Obsidian, formerly known as MPC. M-Touch, I have an M-Touch. Uh, this is a cool little controller. The good thing about Obsidian is you can expand it um, where you're using one channel of DMX coming out, and then you can also use three other channels via ArtNet. So um, you can have four universes in total for a, li a little bit of money. Just a little bit of money. Anyway, that's it for today's episode on lighting. Now, with lighting, with that being said, you can go a lot of different ways. What I have is, it is garbage, it is hot, smelly garbage as compared to companies like Bandit Lighting or Four Wall or any of, you know, any of the major players in the game. What I have is trash, not even close to industry standard. Um, lighting is expensive. It is an expensive endeavor to uh, partake in. There's some companies out there that just do audio. There's some companies out there that do lighting, and then there's a lot of companies that do both. Um, it's tough, it's just tough, it's expensive. And I don't even have like a legit console. I wanna buy a, uh, you know, everybody wants to be Christian Jackson and buy uh, an MA2. I just, I don't do the shows that require something like that. I would, however, like to get a Camsys rig or maybe even uh, a Roadhog by High End Systems. But, you know, we're talking five, six, 10, 12, 13,000 bucks for a console. So, um, right now I'm getting by with what I have. But this is all what it takes to get in the door. You just gotta get in the door and then maybe you grow your business and you can go from there. Um, but yeah, it's still something I'm trying to master as well. I'm no different than you guys. I just put my life out there on YouTube. That's gonna be it for today's episode. If you have a question, shoot me an email, djwoopig at gmail.com. I'm gonna try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, you guys blow my email up. Oh! I forgot to say, thanks for 10,000 subscribers. We are there. I didn't know that. Yeah, we are at 10,000. We're actually like at 10,050 or so. I do want to thank you guys for 10,000 subs. Uh, I, I really do appreciate your continued support. 
uh, I ask that you stay subscribed. We've got a lot more exciting stuff coming up on the channel. Now that we've hit that landmark of 10,000 subscribers, uh, companies are taking us a little bit more serious. Be sure to follow me on all my social media. Also follow our gracious intern who's behind the camera right now at Traitor. We'll see you guys on the next one.